welcome to CEO where we promote empowering information about African Africans and um, I'm often on my channel and it's pretty new I talk about allies of the continent as well and everybody else I say because some of the issues I've wrestled with I find with others around the world and my main issue has been my struggle as an African working within international humanitarian and development organizations and the way Africa is represented in the work we do in the continent. I've struggled with that, I've challenged that and, uh, and, and I find myself in a space where what happens to you when you do not toe the party line? <laughs> there are some of us who've been, who find ourselves in spaces where we challenge things. What are the emotional turmoil? It is a struggle. It is a very lonely place. And, and I'm going to speak very candidly about my experience. How many of us, who are others there out there who have questioned the way things are done, if they, especially with big, huge machines, establishments, when you're one person, you know? I have, in many ways, been questioning why Africa is represented in a particular way in the work we do in international development and humanitarian in the world. And, um, and especially how, you know, humanitarian and development aid in Africa has become an industry and is driven, its expansion in Africa is driven by perverse incentives, individual interest and, and, and livelihood sustenance. I've been doing that for over 20, more than 25 years in this, in this field, but I've intensified it and gone a little bit more public with it in the last, um, I would say last three years. And, and what has it, and the, the personal, personal toll on me <laughs> has been an emotional struggle. And for others who, have, who may be in situations like mine, these are some of the, the challenges you will face professional gossip by that I call it that those who understand what you're saying and to reduce the impact of your voice will pull out gossip who hear things about you um, that will be generated it literally lies and it will go like wildfire <laughs> and it's all to discredit you so that your message would be subsumed and interestingly if I was much younger, I may have buckled under. But luckily, I've started doing this at a very, after decades in the in the workforce, and understand how collegial relationship can be manipulative. So being able to stay the course. So one, that is that. That is one you will face. You will actually be avoided a lot in meetings because even those who agree with you, because um, your position. It's going to be controversial until, it, although it's recognized to be the case. So you would, uh, for me as an African, working in international organizations like this, on the side, many Africans agree with me. But when it comes to conferences, meetings, I, um, for me, integrity, it's very important. It's a core element I always live by. So whatever I, I will bring it to the core, to the mainstream. So the issues I find questionable in the way we relate to Africa, the way we implement international and human international development and humanitarian aid in Africa, I would call attention to consistently until it's changed. Um, many Africans will agree with me on the side, but, um, but will just avoid me in meetings. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, we don't want to associate with you because I will say the same thing respectfully, professionally and consistently in meetings. And, um, and uh, so the one, <laughs> gossip will be pulled around you too. Uh, um, you'll be avoided. And three, you hear those who will say, oh, I need to be efficient. You know, they will even accuse you for talking too much, you do. And you want to say, but I don't agree with what you're doing. So I'm calling attention. I don't want to be efficient in, in, in fostering dependence in Africa. I don't want to be, I'm not going to be very efficient in creating a facilitating promoting an approach that fosters humanitarian aid or development aid dependence in africa so what we're doing is wrong um so and i will consistently respectfully professionally 
draw attention to why it's ineffective. So you'll be accused by colleagues, you'll be name calling. It's a very isolating place to be. That's why you need to take care of yourself. You need to be very conscious of the fact that you're on a path, you're on a journey, and that journey is that you're fostering change. You're a change maker, you will feel exhausted, but you will be more empowered in living your truth and drawing attention to what you know is wrong than settling and being absorbed and implementing actions that you know are wrong. I don't know how many of us in, are in this space. There are many in other sectors, in other areas of work. Mine is in the international humanitarian and development sector, the global one, and how it's been implemented in, in Africa. I will continue to do this because I see that's my calling. I've been doing this for over two decades, intensified it lately. I believe that international humanitarian and development systems are required around the world to assist countries to address crises when they happen. In my experience, it's been a misapplied in Africa and it has fostered aid dependency in many countries in Africa. In the case of Nigeria, the way the inter international humanitarian aid has been as applied has undermined and almost eroded what was an emerging national strong system to address its own crisis in the last five years. So for all those who are challenging systems that don't work, for all those who are raising awareness around systems that don't work, wherever, wherever you are, whatever your profession, Take care of yourself. <laughs> it can be an emotional emotional place, but it's an empowering place too, especially when you're conscious of the role you're playing. Hang in there. The world needs people like people like people like that. <laughs> That's how change happens. Stay blessed, take care, stay safe around COVID. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.